Hey guys, King of Charms, YouTube, your Judge, your Jury, and your Alice, and today I bring to you my fa Sweet 5-0 with Garchomp for Master Premier Classic. Garchomp statistically is the most powerful closer, and it is very, it's actually really dang good. I'm using Dragon Kill Garchomp in this Chowcast. I'll show you how Dragon Kill Garchomp can be an absolute monster with Santum by creating debuffs and absolutely shaking its tail feather, or shaking its giant shark tail thingy. Sharpedo's Dragon Cousin. There you go. Sharpedo's Dragon Cousin. Just what? Just dragon tailing its way to victory. This Hammerhead Dragon Shark is going to absolutely destroy your opponent. Anyways, before we get started, it's going to be my therapist mental health tip of the day. As usual, you could skip this by going ahead of the chapters. So, have you ever vented to your friends or someone and you think you're inconveniencing them because you have to vent? Well, actually, science says yes, that venting does actually help. As usual, this is by Psych Central. I love Psych Central's articles because they are backed by, they are written, they are reviewed by mental health professionals or specialists in their field. In this case, this is about venting. So venting your negative feelings to someone actually makes a difference. And I told you, like I mentioned, you, science says yes. So there's a study, a, a study from 2007, as you see over here, where venting actually is useful. So I, I said, I leave these articles in the resources so you can take a look at it. So things like, Venting can help by offering a deeper insight, opening door to self-compaction, and toxic positivity. Because, you know, Pokemon Go is so toxic positive. Extremely toxic positive. Because the fact of the matter is, there isn't a huge amount of potential. It's oh, it's already too late for Pokemon Go PvP. It's a total lie to say that Pokemon... It's too late for Pokemon Go. It's too... It's late. PvP has been out for four years. GBL been out for three and for these two years that the regional circuit has been out, you literally capped at 1.3k for San Diego. 1.3k for a California regional. Mind you, the last time a COD regional went out, they went like 50, 60k on Twitch. That's our competition. 60, 70 versus 10. But I mean, versus one. Like literally one content creator from Valorant had five times as more exposure then Pokemon Go PvP did. That's how bad it is. That's what toxic positivity is. No, it's not that good. But you have to be honest with yourself. So take a look at this. Toxic positivity comes in a lot of forms. Take a look at this. Venting is healthy, but yes, it also talks about toxic positivity. So this is a great article. Without further ado, this is my 5 0, one of the most powerful closer in the game in Garchomp for Master Premier Classic. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, so here are the battles. As you see, we got Magnezone onto Metagross. This is a winning lead, depending on if they earth the Earthquake for 69420 their way to victory with Metagross. It's happened before the left stayed in and tried to Earthquake through shields. Or they'll double bait with Meteor Mash, which actually isn't a bad idea. We're going to Wild Charge our way to victory. That's what happens if you win the lead and they switch into you. You want to go ahead and clear the debuff first because Magnezone will outpace most things to Wild Charge anyways. Or you can get a little bit of extra energy. It's really up to you. My opponent fires a return and I'm kind of confused because... This dude's a legend, like, he had the legend po- one of the legend poses, and I was like, why would you do that? Because if you have- if you don't have Earthquake or Superpower, you essentially- what's gonna happen is that you get hardwalled by Excadrills. So, yeah. Unless it's a double nuke Snorlax, like I mentioned. I should have fired- this is kind of a misplay here. I should have fired Santum, because I was gonna get the debuff anyways, but they're gonna swap out, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to fire off this Crunch. We have the 2-1 Shield Advantage. We know there's a Machamp in there, and this is pretty much game. By having Shield Advantage, I can just go ahead and Crunch my own victory against this Metagross. They're not going to Shield anything. They're go but we're going to... Unless this is Psychic, most Metagrosses nowadays aren't running Psychic. Psychic will hurt against a Gyarados. It's not going to kill you, but it's going to hurt. As you see, I'm just going to go ahead and eat one of the Meter Mashes and then send in Magnezone. I'm going to attempt to bait here. If not, I can just go straight Mirror Shot. And then I should be able to farm down this Metagross. And then that Machamp is screwed in the back with the 2 to 1s. All I have to do is save both of my shields for my Gyarados. And we're going to Dragon Breath our way to victory. So this is why I like... This is why I freaking love Garchomp. Because Garchomp's Dragon Tail pressure does so much damage. That plus the two shields against the two shield, two shield Dragon Tail will beat a lot of matchups. One of the key ones is Excadrill. 
in the back and it just does a ton of damage with the debuffs. I love killing Togekisses, so this is why I love show show showcasing Togekiss, because I hate Togekiss. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's Smile. I forgot what anime opening I really like, but it's called Smile Bomb, and I forgot- Oh wait, Smile Bomb, yeah! If you watch The Ghost Files, uh, Yu Yu Hagasho, it's a very old school anime before all you Jujutsu Kaisen- Like, no, like, here's one of the gripes I have about Jujutsu Kaisen. Anyways, before this, you know, you switch into Snorlax, and then we're just gonna wild charge down, and you send in Garchomp to go ahead and farm it down, because we're gonna take the Togekiss in anyways. I'm gonna need one more body slam here. I'm going to go ahead and wait. One of the most, before I get back to my, what I was saying before, one of the most annoying glitches nowadays is you see right here where you, I pause and they stop attacking. You, it makes you think they stop attacking, but they actually keep on going. It's been a glitch that's been going on for so long. It's super annoying. Like, how is it this game has been out for four years? We still don't have unranked and it's still lagging. By the way, I tuned in for San Diego Worlds because one of like I know Ramberto. Ramberto's a super cool dude, but it's so stupid how he lagged during one of his matches because he should have 3-0'd and just won his set. But it just shows you state of the game because that's just how dumb the game is right now. And I refuse to compete in a broken game that has zero competitive integrity as long as state of the game and your shopcasters don't even freaking talk about lag because they're freaking zealots for Niantic. But you're not supposed- you're supposed- you should, like, acknowledge it. Like, that's so embarrassing. As a game- as a competitive game, that's so embarrassing. Imagine if I lagged during jujitsu. If I lagged during jujitsu, if I lagged during wrestling, that would have been freaking hilarious. Because there's no such thing as state of the game in combat sports and in a lot of other esports. But importantly, for Call of for freaking Pokemon Go, state of the game, we're the only game where lag is acceptable for people to ignore in shoutcasting. That's the funniest part. And now some other games will do it, but usually there's too many people to worry about it. Like if you watch the Apex Worlds, there's someone there's a, someone that lagged out. It was it was like bad, but they got aped anyways, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah. So as you see here, we're just going to go ahead and just poorly mirror shot our way to victory. Anyway, Smile Bomb. It's one of the greatest animes. Yu Yu Hakusho. For all you Jujutsu Kaisen nuts, Jujutsu Kaisen, it's a good anime. Don't get me wrong. I like it a lot. But it's a literal... Jujutsu Kaisen is literally Ghost Detective. It's literally Ghost Detective. And, and, and 2020's modern day of Ghost of of Yu Yu, ha of Yu Yu Hakusho. That's really all it is. And it's kind of pissing me off. It doesn't, it, it doesn't piss me off, but it's like really like... People pretend like it's like one of the no Yu Yu Hakusho was what a fantastic f freaking anime. Yu Yu Jujutsu Kaisen like no it, like it's good but it's not it's not better than Yu Yu Hakusho. I'm sorry for all you 2022 like current anime nuts. It's just a fancy trend where everyone it's like I said it's modern day Ghost Detective. If you watch Ghost Detective you know what I'm talking about. But Jujutsu Kaisen is a good anime. It's not great though. Okay, it's the same thing with what you call it. What, what you call it. it's like and the same but uh, kind of same thing with chainsaw man like chainsaw man it's literally like you you it's literally you you haga show because you kill demons you're killing demons for the thing like you're killing demons high school boy turns into a demon turns into some kind of thing that kills demons ghost detective so yeah there's my gripe anyways for this next battle it's literally and i almost practically identical to the last one Except it's a different trainer this time, and I hate Togekisses, so this is why we're doing Togekiss. But yes, it, like, Chainsaw Man, good, but not great. It's, it's literally, there, the, every, ad, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm betting, like, both, like, yo, it's Ghost Detective. It's literally like Yu Yu Hakusho. You, you should watch Yu Yu Hakusho. It's a fantastic freaking anime. The Spear Gun, like, the Spear Gun is very goaded. If you know, you know. But anyways, this is one of the matches that I was talking about. The Two Shield versus Excadrill. You could Two Shield your way through Excadrill. And that's what makes, like, you don't need Mud Shot. Unless you're running Mud Power, unless you're running Earth Power, then you can use Mud Shot. But as you see here, Dragon Tail plus Santum is just such a great combination. I'm able to Dragon Tail my way through. And now we're just going to absolutely er erase this Togekiss by debuffing it. And then we're going to just shock it to victory. My opponent will die with two shields. So as you see, my opponent is going to attempt to charm their way to victory. It's not going to happen. I'm going to make you die with two shields, and I'm just going to zap you down. I want them to die with two shields, so all I'm going to do is just keep tapping and make sure I don't, they don't spend any of their shields. And as you see, that's GG's. That's how much I hate Togekiss. Bye Togekiss, I hate you. Okay, thanks. Love you, not love you. Bye. And this is where Gyaradoses go. So if you lose the lead against X, I've won it against X. If you lose the lead against Excadrill, and I'm sad I didn't get this battle because it was it was like 
it was if you lose the lead you say switch into gyarados gyarados take back switch and then garchomp with dragon tail can come out with a win condition against you that's what you that's how you beat excadrill i faced an excadrill and got hard and then took switch and then dragon tail my way to victory but that's the general way if you get an excadrill lead with this team lose the lead say switch into gyarados gyarados win back switch and then just realign as you see, Gyarados is going to Aqua Tail its way down to the Metagross. I still have half of a Gyarados, and they have a Togekiss in the back, which actually isn't bad at all. Because all we need to do is we're going to go ahead and Aqua Tail. Aqua Tail does, uh, does a decent chunk of damage, and that's a perfect Togekiss. So, my lord, these Togekiss players. You always want to wait the clock down. So you're going to wait, and then you're going to smile, not like Rengoku when he, di uh, when he died in Demon Slayer, like Mugen Train. That was a fantastic movie, by the way. Loved it so much. And here's kind of a little bit of a problem. I'm going to fire Mirror Shot to go ahead and make sure that I run the clock, and then send in Garchomp. There's no reason to keep Garchomp alive because we know there's a Togekiss in the back. So all we're going to do is we're just going to eat all the charge moves, we're going to fire the Sand Tomb, and then we're going to leave Magnezone with two shields, and we're going to wipe out that Togekiss from the face of the earth. Our opponent can do one of two things. They can suffer, or they can top left. And unfortunately, they don't choose to top left. They're keep, they're going to fight tooth and nail to somehow, some way, try to find a way for a dub, despite the fact that they're epically screwed because they're using Togekiss. Togekiss has really fallen off. Now it now it's now for this team, like, if you're going to use something, Florgus is better just because of the pressure it puts. But the problem with Togekiss is that Togekiss get basically Excadrill and Metagross and Magnezones. It's, that's the biggest problem with using Togekiss nowadays, and it's really not worth it. Because you there are multiple things you can get locked into that just isn't worth going against. Speaking of Florius, this is the one I'm talking about. Florius, Florius, Florius can actually pressure Magnezone if it's debuffed by Wild Charge. You have to fire mirror shots, but it takes four mirror shots for you to actually kill a Florius. So don't think that Florius can't beat you because it depends on like how it's played out. As you see, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fire my Wild Charge play as I usually do. Fire Wild Charge up before you swap out. And they actually use a shield which was kind of surprising, but I'm just going to send a Garchomp. Garchomp can eat 69,000 pounds of Snorlax. I don't know how much this Snorlax weighs. 6,900 tons or 69,000 pounds. It depends. I don't know. Snorlax likes eating. So for those of you who don't know and you watch the old Pokemon anime, you eat Thor. Well, Snorlax was eating thorns and it can buffet on thorns. I don't get how your mouth wasn't bleeding because thorns are sharp. But okay. So, yeah, Snorlax. Anyways, Snorlax is... I love Snorlax because all it does is eat. And our opponent is going to try to farm us down with this Florius. That's actually not a bad idea. I should have fired... One of the misplays I did here is I should have fired Mirror Shot. I mean, I should have fired Santum to debuff it. And then I actually shield a Petal Blizzard, which I'm like, why? But there's no reason for me to keep two shields at this point. I want to keep Magnezone on this thing because I don't want my Gyarados to go against this Florgus because Florgus actually resists Dragon. It resists double resist Dragon Breath. And with Fairy Wind, this thing is going pretty fast. And as you see, that Petal Blizzard did a decent amount of damage. I was like, holy lord. That did a lot more than I thought it would. But as you see, we're just going to mirror shot our way to victory. I should be able to farm it down now. And now we have a bunch of energy. Well, not a bunch of energy, but we have some energy for the back row. So my opponent's going to send in there. This is actually very scary. So the thing about this Magnezone on Magnezo play is that the thing I I they we're gonna resist everything I have. So I'm like, okay, I'm kind of in trouble. So I'm gonna eat this and I'm gonna bank and pray that it's a mirror shot. And I call it. Because my opponent has to bait our second shield. I'm going to send in Garchomp now, and this is why I'm glad I saved my sand tube. Because now I can hit it and lower this Magnezone enough to where I can... Because here's the thing, my Gyarados is going to get yeeted by one wall charge. I'm going to... My cheeks are going to get thunderclapped and destroyed by this Magnezone. And as you see, I'm able to force the rest of this energy out from this Magnezone. This is a 10,000 IQ play. I don't know how the heck I was thinking about this. But I'm able to get Magnezone low enough just so that I can finish it off with a Mirror Shot. Because... Magnezone has to wild charge here and then that lowers it enough to where I can go ahead and fire my wild charge or mirror shot either one and this will KO and that's game as you see this was just a little fancy 
So everything worked out in the end, and I'm really glad I saved that sand tomb. So I'm like, I thought it was a misplay, but it actually wasn't a misplay. My brain was just thinking back literally to the future. Back to the Future is a great movie, by the way. It's a very, 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 very great movie. If you don't know, you know. As you see, my opponent is very good. They insta-swap into Dragonite as a safe switch. And this is why I don't like Dragonite safe switch. Because there are a lot of Gyaradoses out there. And because of that, I sh And also, I should have shielded that. You sh shield your... I don't know why I did this. This is a misplay from hell. So this one's definitely a misplay from me. You want to go ahead and shield, double shield. Because as you see, Dragon Claw plus those Dragon Bits, they're going to be able to take you out. Luckily, my opponent blows their energy here because now I can send in Magnazone and then go ahead and farm down. Except, like I mentioned, that was kind of a misplay on my part. So this is probably going to be a superpower. So in that instance, I'm going to shield because I'm going to get superpower. There's a superpower. We have energy. The problem is if, they're, if they have a Togekiss in the back, I'm in a lot of trouble because we don't want Garchomp against Togekiss. And it happens to be a Mamoswine. So what we're going to do is Mirror Shot this poor Ice Beacon to death. Now, as you see, the mirror shots are going to add up. It takes all quite a bit of damage. Because, you know, I'm going to steal your elo. If you don't get that pun, that's okay. That was, a, that was like, that was actually pretty bad. You get it? Steal your S-T-E-E-L, your elo. Okay, if you, if you know, you know. Three mirror shots will take out the ice bacon. Poor ice bacon. Bacon is good, by the way. Oh my gosh, I went to this place called Omelette Cafe in Vegas when I get to visit my cousins. And they had really good bacon. And I love bacon. Bacon's very good. The bacon, bacon, let's see. Breakfast, favorite breakfast item. One of my favorite breakfast items is pancakes. Pancakes and toast. Pancakes and toast is very good. And speaking of toast, this Gyarados is very toast. And instead of watching their Gyarados get yeeted to the Shadow Realm, they decide to top left. This is my first opponent on top left. And as you see, that's the fourth battle. Here's the fifth battle. The other four, I tried to find a battle where I had a really neutral lead. And this is probably the only one. Because the thing is, Dragonite's a very neutral lead because if they hit superpower, they have a good chance of taking the match from you. So as you see, my opponent's staying in and they're playing that superpower game. I try to bait with Mirror Shot. I don't succeed in getting the bait. So this is probably going to be a superpower. If I don't shield this, this is going to suck. And as you see, this is a superpower. Yeah. Yeah, luckily my opponent gives up switch. To this is the only reason. So this was a well-deserved 5 because not only did I let my Magnezone get yeeted to the Shadow Realm, the Seal of Orichalcos, if you know what I'm talking about, you know. It definitely took my soul. And that was a pretty dark season of Yu-Gi-Oh. So if you, watch, if you know, you know. But because my opponent gave up switch here, this is the only reason I had a win condition. Because I don't have to shield anything here. I can farm this Magnezone down and now I have one outrage will kill that Dragonite. So my opponent has pressure on them to shield. And I just save both of my shields for my Gyarados and pray that Gyarados has a positive matchup against their closer. I'm double debuffed, so this really sucks. So my ploy here is to go ahead. I have two top options. I can swap into Gyarados or I can go and hit whatever's in the back with outrage. As you see, I'm trying to swap out and that's an Excadrill. So this sucks a lot. So I'm gonna fire my Aqua Tails. The good thing here is that I'm the good thing here is that I can live one of these rock slides, but I'm in a little bit of danger here. I have to take him to the zeros, and I have to either sand tomb the Excadrill, or they're gonna send in their Dragonite, sack it, and then we're gonna have a two to one shield advantage against that Excadrill. Which is kind of a mistake for my opponent. They should have ideally stayed in because in this instance i have so much energy on my garchomp i'm going to dragon tail down here and i should be able to double sand tomb for the victory so as you see here all we're going to go ahead is double sand tomb because they're going to be debuffed they have to shield. well they're if they're smart enough they'll shield the second one and as you see they are very smart they shield they shielded the second they're going to shield the second one but as you see here with double debuffs plus a shield i should be able to just dragon tail for the dub at minus two, their Excadrill is very dangerous right now. And as you see, that damage is adding up. This is why I love Dragon Tail Jarchomp. And you're going to see just sweet 5-0, and that's game. As you see, the drill run goes through, and then I'm going to go ahead and I still hit... I sent Santum just in case. I don't want to risk it because for some reason, if they get a Rock Slide, I'm still going to get KO'd or possibly get KO'd out this range. So you just don't want to risk it. And as you see, despite my UFO electricity being yeeted to the dimensions of... 69, 420, oh my god, it was terrible. God, I, I literally sacked my Magnezone. We still get the 5-0. As you see, we still get the elusive 5-0 for the 
from the 166, 167, and then as you see, I get 5-0. So this, hope y'all enjoy this. This is just my Magnezone Gyarados core, a sweet 5-0 with the most powerful closer in Garchomp for Master Premier Classic. And I hope y'all enjoy the battles. And that's game. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. As you see, Garchomp just actually blasts this way to victory. I hope you enjoyed the long shout catch because I had so many battles where I was trying to find a super negative lead. And like I mentioned to you, the only battle where I actually got an extra drill, I didn't record. So I was like, dang, dude. Because you can beat extra drills, but you have to take switch on a Gyarados. You lead the, lose the lead, you have to say switch in a Gyarados. And then a wild charge can KO extra drill at a certain range because... Excadrill is so squishy that it does like one wall charge can do like 30% of its HP despite the fact that it's double resisted just because Magazone does so much damage and Excadrill is pretty squishy. It's glass cannon. But I hope you all enjoyed the battles. This is the last time you will see Master Premier Classic as we will have a literal week where Master League and Open Master League and Master Premier Cup as in there will be no all it's an all XL week. So that week I'll probably be doing PvP tutorials because it's going to be an all XL week. Freaking disgrace my Niantic. Why would you allow an all XL week? In order for this game to grow, you need to lower the barrier to entry. High barrier to entry games do not work. Low barrier to entry games work. And yeah, lower, low barrier to entry games are literally, that's what's worked in esports. That's the meta for esports. I don't know why you would make a high barrier to entry game so high. And the problem, the reason why Pokemon Go is very high is because in order for you to build a team, even to compete for regionals, it takes a ridiculous amount of time. And if you don't have a Metacham XL, it's going to be pretty difficult for you to compete because Metacham XL should be banned. XLs and legendaries, regionals, there should be a top 15 ban list that should revolve for regionals just like Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is monstrous when it comes to banning. The second something does good in regionals or in one tournament, they will ban the crap out of that card and update their list. That's how bad Pokemon Go PvP is. It's not really competitive. It's There's so many things that should be changed already and so many things that should have been changed, but sadly, Niantic just all they want is your money. So if you're spending money on this game, really consider on what you're spending money on something long-term because Pokemon Go PvP is a very finite game and it will go down and it will be forgotten. We will never reach that Requiem, which will be 50 to 60k viewers or 100k viewers. That's impossible. There's no way. There's no way. We're getting eclipsed by too many other esports. So, but it's also for your mental health. No one cares that you're a legend. Sadly, it isn't. A lot of people care about Radiant. My kids that play Valorant, that I treat in therapy, they love, they play Valorant. They probably care about Radiant. They won't care that you're Pokemon Go PvP legend, or you're not a Predator, in, or you're a Predator in Apex. They'll probably care about that. But other than that, most kids nowadays aren't playing Pokemon Go PvP. And that's just a sad fact. But, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Do me a huge favor. Please like, subscribe, and comment for the YouTube algorithm. Good luck in your Google Valley, and I will see y'all on the next video.